Okay, it's me again, you know, JK for the record, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, today I want to talk about sometimes you have to be a, a golfer. And what I mean by that, a Marcus golfer. I mean, you know, you know what I found out was the real threat that Marcus golfer posed to the powers that be back then, outside of just waking the people up, is that he understood equity back then. You know, if I'm not mistaken, when I got a chance to actually do a lot of due diligence on Marcus Golf and, you know, a lot of other, you know, I feel like it was our forefathers, like the Nova True Ali, and we could go on and on and it's all the way to modern time. I'm just going to speak on Mark, Marcus Golf right now. You know, this man raised $750,000 in that era of time. And if you estimate that type of money from then to that, I mean, I ain't got to tell you how many millions or maybe being the dollars that are being today's money. And he did it on the backs of us, of his people. Meaning like, you know, he sold equity stock in that, that he had in the Delaware structure. Probably had a trust too. I don't know too much if he had a trust, but I'm quite sure if you know that much back then, he probably know what we waking up to now. I mean, a man raised $750,000 back in that era of time. No debt finance, no borrowing, but I'm talking about selling stock to the community as, you know, because you got to think, baby, the blacks were still unified. They still had family structure. So, I mean, that was a threat, man. You understand? Because he was doing just like these people did. See, we get caught up on debt. and ain't nothing wrong with debt. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you study the Rothschilds and Rockefeller and J.P. Morgan, yeah, they borrowed money probably. But a lot of times they actually sold shares to each other into their circle and they managed other people's money, et cetera, too. So it's like they they got, they they, they strategies to put the government in debt, right? Put the other bankers in debt and then put the people in debt, right? And I'm not here to dis dispute that debt good or bad. The point I'm showing you that, you know, it's, it's less people that speak on the subject of equity. And I'm not talking about home equity. I'm talking about equity dealing with, you know, if you got this paper money, this fiat money, you, and you insert it into your, your, your corporation, it's not, it's like that. It's, a, it's, it's, it's not, you know, debt is, it's, it's equity right or wrong under, under manage the books, right? If you sell shares, to invest in yourself, private shares, or even, you know, public equity. It's, it's equity, right? You got debt financing, which most people talk about credit. But, man, you, when you understand that, what Marcus Goffey did, man, you know, and he and he actually took the money, and he actually had the uh, black line, the black line stock, black stock, black stock ship, right? Sorry if I'm, if I'm mistaken, the ship wrong. But, you know, I'm, you, I'm whoever listening, they probably familiar to Marcus Goffey. I ain't got to go into the history where he come from Jamaica and how he went to Harlem and, and you know, and all that and, Grab the people up and stuff. But my, my message today is, man, how powerful equity is. You know, and then he had interest in where he had, where he was sending, trying to send people back to Africa, Africa to live where I believe that was. I mean, <laughs> the power that be had all that interest over that with type of rubber and things of that nature. So, you know, they definitely wanted to go over that. But, you know, that's why they had, that's why they created all these mail fraud acts in 1917. And, you know, if I could speak without sounding like a theory guy, I was I was surprised they built that around for him because he didn't go back to what's going on today, how they get, you know, us through our people, our CI competition and farming. They ain't new data, collect data, and they need somebody to, you know, participate in and be an actor, you know. Well, that's what they did Marcus Goffin back then, you know. If, you, if you're familiar with the case, you see that he, all the people was bringing this money to Marcus Goffin, getting an equity stake into his operation, he was, you know, buying ships and he was doing other things and, you know, had an operation and things and, you know, and things and, and things of that nature. But then what happened was, you know, they, they got it. They got it. The government or the, the FBI, or, you know, the, the government, FBI, whatever you want to consider these people. They sent a guy that looked like me and you to him and was wired up, I believe. Or I don't know if it was wired up back then, but he bought some stock for, for, for Marcus Golf in Chicago. When he bought the stock from Chicago, I mean, he, when he did the transfer in Chicago, I mean, I mean that's when the indictment came down there. But I know for sure from my study, he had, a, I think, back then in 1920 or something, if I'm not mistaken, Marcus Garvey had a Delaware Corporation, and he had the structure in place just like they was doing, right? The Privacy Act laws and things, and all that. So he was doing the same these people was doing. You know, he just had the, the type of, I mean, the type of, what can I say, I mean, the type of physical wealth that they had, but he had the surface. And he actually had substance like him, you know, because he had the ships. I mean, we understand amorality. That's what all this this this, this federal indictments is based on amorality. It's not no real law, law to see. So you look at the clothes these guys were wearing back then, you know, you can see the signs and symbols that he would try to get the people also to wake up and say, we got to have our ships for export and import, transporting our goods back and forth and all that, man. The man was way ahead of his time. 
But you know, they use this 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 guy to come in as a as as a as a potential investor, buy some shares or you know, deal with him. And I believe because I, I I I forget more than I learned. But I remember the story from, from from doing some 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 digging in it, you know, and it was like the guy had he must have had must I don't know if he had made too much of a a, 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 a interest over he could pay him I don't know what it was but it was able to charge Marcus Garvey and then with uh I think it was mail fraud or something like that it was able to finally get their hands on Marcus but then you know if you look at it back then before 1933 before the country went in bankruptcy and all that you still had common law so you 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 know. You know your your money was backed by gold, so you know the, the you know the, the law was backed by gold. I mean the, the 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 law, the gold back in the money, it balanced the law, so you still had common law. So we look at it, it couldn't they, back then they couldn't really nail people to the cross, giving people these life sentences. I mean they might as well did. Uh, what my other guy, uh, 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 Millie Cog York, that's how he got all this time. They got the girl to lie on the man and all that. Went to you know he had the peers in Georgia and things of that nature. You know he go, you know he ABX and stuff. That might not must be really him because he let the you know spirit go and shit. That's just a shell body if you ask me. But I mean he a real individual. What I'm saying is he came too. But the thing is back then they couldn't really they couldn't really nail Marcus Garvey. So the most they could give him back then under common law they did like five years sitting I think in Atlanta penitentiary. Came home he hit the surface in New Orleans. That was when he got out they they extradited him back to New Orleans. They ain't back but he he landed here in New Orleans. And then from there he, he, I forgot what state, but he wound up, all the greats wound up in London. All the African people, all the, the Af Nigerian, dear motherfuckers from Africa, black from all around and whites, whatever, they wound up in London. And you will see why, because London is another a, a power structure that <laughs> they go to, no vigilante, all those, and, you know, they played around globally, you know what I'm saying? But Marcus Garvey wound up going to London, you know what I'm saying? Where they got more, they, 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 they prestigious Jews again from, you know? But um, it, it, it's a beautiful story when you understand how powerful equity is, man, how we can use it amongst our circle and our people. And, you know, we still can borrow money from outside lenders, investors, and, I mean, with banks and different things. When people speak on investors, they mix up debt finance, and, and they understand it's equity finance, too. It's assets-based finance. You got a different strategy with dealing with finance. You know, it's just one way. And, and next time, I'm going to bring you to the to the live chart boy and break down the difference between equity finance and debt finance. That's what Wealth Occasion about showing you how equity finance works. I mean, I use microfinance strategy to borrowing money, business credit cards, and then that nature to tip of rent. But you gotta be able to be a Marcus Golfy at times, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, man, you know, and um, yeah, he landed here. Another thing, Marcus Marcus drove the car down here to New Orleans to, to have a sit down with the Ku Klux claims, with the KKK. Yeah, he was a bad motherfucker, man. He he came down here personally, told the people, hey, I understand that y'all, you know, y'all people won this country over and blah, blah, blah. He had to sit down. I had to read the thing over. The man had a mountain gun on top of the car. I had to say, hold on, he had a mountain gun on top of the car. The man drove from New York, if I'm not mistaken. You need to do your own study, find out if I got some details a little wrong. I had to read this book over because I was in the shoot and I had came across the book. I already had a lot of, a lot of material on Marcus Garvey. Met a lot of guys who was... You know, we, we elaborate on these type of stuff, you know, because I ain't just in finance and economics. I'm just on history, health, mentally. I mean, you know, I ain't, sometimes I'll be all over the place to get in a great place. So people might think I'll be all over the place, but I'm balanced. You know what I'm saying? I'm believing. I'm scared of everything. I come like the truckers, you know, like on, on, the, on the interstate. That's why they got the, the way station. You know, that's why I was leaving. We could pretty much adjust and adapt there because you got to come through. It's like that's why we don't have no real emotion because the leaver don't have a sign of a species. You got to think about that for a minute now. Right. So with that being said, you know what I'm saying? I understand self, you know what I'm saying? To understand <laughs> you and everybody I come across. But back to the Marcus story. Yeah, man. It was like, man, you, you know, Marcus and we could go on and on about different. But yeah, I mean, like, so when I read it, I'm like, yo, this motherfucker drove the car down with a, 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 a mountain fucking, I don't know what, what type of machine gun it was. It came down here, bro. I think it was in New Orleans, bro. You know, New Orleans got a lot of hidden, hidden history. You know that. When you start learning the history of us, the wicked New Orleans stories and shit, you start understanding why we move and how we think. We always been individual. We never been like a, as a gang, you know what I'm saying? But we come together, but it's still gonna be individual thinkers. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, you start understanding the, the culture, where you come from, you know what I'm saying? Because we was already here, man. You know, when they talk about the Moors and all that, you know, they still got the uh, up north Louisiana. You got uh, you got the Washington, you know, Paris still up there. You know, it's a lot of hitting Jews down here too. So. You know, this this really this whole country is the old land, you know what I'm saying? So Louisiana, the boot, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of hidden history. They don't want us to know. And I I, I would learn a lot of things about just our culture, the boot, the state, our, our city New Orleans, and all the circuits around and things like that. Hey bro, we some powerful motherfuckers too. But the point is I'm saying that, you know, 
we talk about it another time, but then you know what I'm saying. But the, I believe the Ku Klux Klan, the KK Hayes, was right here in his city, Marcus Rhode Island. So I was just saying that like, sometimes you gotta be a marketer. You try to get funded. You try to unify people, and you know it ain't about unifying the people as a whole. It's just about you guys, uh, groups of people that you can come together as collective and understand. Hey man, what we doing? Cause me, I'm big on equity finance. I use debt finance too, you know, temporary purposes. But I like to sell equity shares. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm processing at the moment, man. Private placement, memorandums, and stuff like private offering. You know, the attorney I spoke with, he was like, "Nah, these attorneys in this state don't deal with that. You'll do better in New York." I say in Cali, they got venture capitalists out there. Like you, right? So probably Texas, I got a good chance I'll get me a you know a good attorney. But I got an attorney that I had spoke with about it and things and stuff. So yeah, that's about it. So um, tune in to me another time. I'm going to end this video, but um, thanks. You know, y'all have a wonderful. Haha. <laughs>